Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So I'm really excited because today I have part one of two perfume hauls that I'm going to be sharing with you. The second one will be up either later this week or the beginning of next week and I'm super excited to share these perfumes with you. I have some amazing new ones and I have a couple more amazing ones on the way and also if you are not subscribed make sure that you do subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a video because I will be doing also a completely new updated perfume collection as well as an updated top 10 for life and a few other fun videos coming up soon. If this is your first time on my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Alithia and on this channel we talk mostly about perfume but we also sometimes do a little bit of minimalism, home decor, and things like that. So if that is your cup of tea, please make sure to stick around and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get into today's video. Okay, so good morning guys. Um, so I'm just sipping on my morning coffee still and I want to say I apologize that I haven't been here for as much the last week and a half. I've been really busy. I've been out of town a little bit as well. Also got a new microphone so really excited to see how that works. So let me know how the sound quality is in today's video. So I'm just sipping on my morning coffee. For those of you who are going to ask, my nail color is Just Brew It from Sally Hansen. The perfect shade of sort of a cool neutral blush color. And I did want to show you before we get into the perfumes this beautiful tray that I did pick up when I was at HomeSense um, over the last few days. I've been looking for a tray to keep my um, teas on and my coasters and my flowers and I always like to have some sort of a little dessert around and I really think that these little um, containers of biscotti are so cute and I just think they look really adorable sitting on a counter. I also love a whole white floral moment so yeah I'm obsessed with this tray. I think it's beautiful. I got these beautiful marble coasters as well from HomeSense and um, actually that one needs to be washed but yeah I think they all look really pretty sitting out here. I should get some kind of a little container to put tea bags in but I think it looks really pretty and yeah I just wanted to share that with you guys before we get started and if you're interested in a tray similar to this I will try to find this one or one very similar and link it down below. So without too much further discussion about my coffee, let's get into today's perfumes. Okay, so let's start out with Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Forever. So if you guys watch my channel, you know that I'm not a huge fan of the original Light Blue or the Light Blue Intense. I just find them both to be a little bit screechy and um, they kind of give me a little bit of a headache and there's just something about them that they're just not for me. So this one actually was a gift, you guys. So this was gifted to me by one of my good friends and this is a really beautiful kind of a white floral fruitier version of the original light blue so this wasn't really completely a blind gift she actually knew that I didn't really care for the original light blue so this was kind of a gamble for both of us um, but we both really hoped that I liked it and I do actually like this one so this one in the opening has lemon blood orange and green apple in the middle you have orange blossom and white flowers and in the base you have white musk cedar and cashmere and it's a more fruity floral version of the original light blue and this one you guys is the one that I think is tolerable for me out of all the ones that I've smelt this one has that little bit of a white floral component that makes it a little bit less typical light blue I think it's very different from the original light blue when you first spray this it does smell very similar to the original but after that it starts to change and I get a lot of white florals in this and it becomes just very soft and feminine and pretty. It has decent longevity as well. I haven't given it a proper wear, but I did wear about six or seven sprays all over my arms the other day when I left the house, and I could smell this on my arms. It's definitely not the most long-lasting perfume in my collection, but I wouldn't call this particularly weak. I think this is one that if you want a lot of people to smell you and you want it to project, you will have to overspray a little bit, but I really like that this is a fresh, easy grab-and-go with a a really pretty feminine undertone to it. So yeah, this definitely does smell like a light blue flanker. It's not super far removed from the original light blue, but it definitely does have that floral twist in it. Yeah, I like it. It does have a floral twist to it. I think this is a very easy wearable scent for a hot summer day and I'm really happy that I have this bottle because like I've been telling you guys, I've been on the hunt for a really easy grab and go citrus, even though I already have a lot of easy grab and go perfumes. I really wanted another kind of a citrus one for hot weather and this is kind of perfect. It's that perfect combination of some white florals and citrus as well as a little bit of a fruitiness in the opening and it does dry down to a very, very very familiar light blue base. That is Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Forever. 
so the next one you guys is one that I've already shared with you on Instagram so by the way if you're not following me on Instagram head on over there and follow me because I do give you guys a lot of sneak peeks of perfumes and videos and I do reels and things like that so if you're interested in that or home decor things like that then definitely head on over and follow me so this is Gris Charnel and you guys this perfume took a really really long time to grow on me I kind of went on a journey with this one similar to what I did with Maison Francis Kirchhoff Baccarat Rouge that was another one that I didn't love at first sniff and it took me a long time of going back and sniffing the ad or going back and sniffing a sample um, to actually fall in love with the perfume and now that I have kind of discovered the magic so to speak of Gris Charnel I understand what all the hype is and I understand why everyone loves it so much so first let me tell you what some of the notes are so in the opening you have cardamom fig and black tea which I have told you guys cardamom is one of my absolute favorite notes in a perfume I'm discovering this also has iris and bourbon vetiver and in the base you have sandalwood and tonka bean and first I want to kind of give you a close-up of the bottle there is a little bit of a color blemish there on the top I'm not really sure where that came from I did order this from a company in Canada called H Parfums and they are based out of Montreal um, so I had never heard of that company before you guys I literally just googled where to buy BDK parfums in Canada and that popped up so that was pretty good um, so you guys this perfume is a little bit not a little bit, it's a lot unisex. And as I have told you guys, I've recently discovered about myself that I don't particularly like wearing a lot of unisex fragrances. I've discovered that I like to smell a little bit more feminine. I definitely prefer to be on the feminine side of the spectrum when it comes to fragrances. That's just what I feel most comfortable in and I like sweet perfumes, I like sexy perfumes, flirty perfumes, that's just kind of how I am. So this one is not sweet, it's not particularly flirtatious. It does have a sensuality about it. It is a powdery, soft, spicy, woody fragrance and it's just very, very unique. Anybody who has smelt this, anybody who I have shared a sample with or let them smell this is kind of, they kind of go one of two ways. Sometimes they're really put off by it or they're like, whoa, I don't know what to think about that one or they absolutely are crazy about it. First of all, I want to say when you order BDK parfums, these are high, high quality fragrances. The bottles are extremely heavy. The packaging is beautiful. The boxes that they come in are exquisite. Um, the scents themselves are unique and usually long lasting as well. So this lid itself is extremely heavy, you guys. Like you could use this as a paperweight or as a weapon if you so preferred. Um, and this is of course the absolutely stunning bottle. I love this bottle. And this is such a unique, pretty fragrance. I officially have nothing else quite like this in my collection. I do have other fragrances that have iris. I have other fragrances that have cardamom, like Jill Malone, Mimosa, and cardamom. And I also have uh, Luby Rouge from Christian Louboutin, which also has cardamom and iris. It is a powdery, soft, spicy, but that one is much more on the feminine side. It has some vanilla and it's a very sexy perfume. This one, you guys, I almost... I almost find this very comforting. When I first smelt this, I did not think I would ever own it in my collection. I thought it was too woody, too masculine, too heavy. I did not like it. I, th I knew that it was a good perfume. Like I knew at first sniff smelling it that it was a masterpiece. You can tell it has that quality to it. It is just one of those perfumes. But I didn't think I would ever want to wear it. And actually after wearing the sample that I have a few times, I discovered that I really love the way this smells on myself. I love the sillage that I get. I love the whiff that I get when I walk outside. It's just beautiful. I actually wore this to bed the other night and it was so comforting and so lovely and I just really, really enjoyed it. And it does have a sexiness to it. It totally does have a sexiness to it. There's something about it. I wouldn't say this would be your go-to for date night or like intimate occasion maybe like this wouldn't be the first one I would think of, but it definitely does have a sensuality to it. And I'm really excited to see if I get compliments when I wear it. I haven't really worn it beside or with my partner yet. And that is BDK Gris Charnel. Beautiful juice, beautiful packaging, beautiful fragrance. I just really love it. So I definitely would suggest trying this if you haven't, if you kind of didn't want to buy the hype, didn't want to hop on the hype train with this one. It's pretty good. So BDK Gris Charnel. Okay, so the next one, you guys, is from Mugler, and if you are a Mugler fan, you might already have this one in your collection, and you will definitely recognize the bottle. So this is Alien Flora Futura. So this is a flanker of the original Alien, which a lot of you guys know I absolutely love, um, but this is Flora Futura. So this one, you guys, I sort of bought impulsively the other day. Um, I was a 
on a bit of a shopping spree because I was in the city for the first time when all the stores had their testers out and you could just kind of smell freely. Um, but this one I just really liked at first sniff. I had kind of rediscovered it. It was one that I had smelt last year, wasn't really in love with it, but I was kind of looking for those fresh, easy, grab and go, fruity summer floral perfumes. And this one really just struck me as very beautiful when I sprayed it and I bought it. So in the opening, you have citron and Buddha wood, and I've never smelt Buddha wood. I don't know what that smells like. In the middle, you have night blooming Sirius, which is a white floral. And in the base, you have white amber and sandalwood. And I actually have this on my arm at the moment. This is a really pretty, kind of a fruity, little bit fresh, white floral, woody fragrance that is, is reminiscent of the original Alien. A lot of people say that they don't pick up on that original alien in Flora Futura. I beg to differ. I can definitely tell that this is an alien flanker. It definitely does have that alien undertone and I really, really like it. This is kind of a pretty wearable, more perfumey, like more traditionally perfume smelling version of alien. It has those really feminine white florals in it. It has a beautiful burst of some sort of yellow fruity citrusy notes in the opening, which I guess would be that citron. It's absolutely beautiful. And this lasts on my skin for quite a long time and the dry down is heavenly. The dry down is very beautiful. It's a really pretty white floral woody dry down. And I just think that this is a really easy grab and go for the summer. It's just kind of falls under that category of like easy grab and go perfume, which I like having a few options of those available in my collection because right now I feel like I have a lot of special perfumes or a lot of like date night perfumes, but I don't have a lot of easy grab and go every single day, going to the gym, running errands, you know, just going window shopping, whatever, just when you just need something easy to put on. And this is very pretty. So this one was a little bit impulsive of me. I do think that I bought it a little I think I bought it a little impulsively to be honest, but I do really like it. Like it's one of those perfumes that now that I'm smelling it, I'm like, did I really need it? <laughs> but yeah, that's my honest opinion. Um, I'm not going to like hype this one up and be like, oh my gosh, you have to get it. You have to get it. No, like it's a nice perfume. It's a nice easy, everyday grab and go. It's nothing super remarkable, I will say, but I do find it pleasant. So it's pretty, it's light, it has moderate longevity, it has moderate sillage. I think it's very classy smelling and very pretty. And it also has that alien undertone, which I like. So that is Alien Flora Futura. Okay, you guys, and the next one is Victor and Raw Flower Bomb Nectar. So you guys, this one is not a new perfume. I think it's a pretty popular one. I think a lot of people really like this one and have this one. I've only seen it talked about in a handful of videos though, to be honest, like when I look at people's perfume collections, not a whole lot of people have this one, but the people who have it really love it. And this again was part of my big Sephora shopping spree day when I was able to go and freely smell all of the perfumes and I pretty much just had a heyday and I was so happy that I could just spray everything on myself, on paper, on clothing, whatever I wanted to do. I was free to walk around the store and like try on makeup samples and stuff and just like marinate in my perfumes. And it was really, really nice. And I kind of loved this one and I bought it. And so I think this perfume will always remind me of the very first day I was able to shop freely. It's kind of a liberating memory for me. So Flower Bomb Nectar, if you have never smelt it, is basically a very extremely sweetened version of Flower Bomb. So let me tell you what the notes are in this. So in the opening, you have Gunpowder, Cassis, and Bergamot. In the middle, you have Osmanthus, Orange Blossom, and Jasmine Sambac. And in the base, you have Vanilla, Tonka Bean, Benzoin, and Patchouli. So first of all, let me give you a little close-up of the bottle. It's kind of cute. To be honest, like I'm not a huge fan of the bottle. I would prefer if it was a little bit more vertical <laughs> or like stood up taller because it looks extremely small. This is a 50 ml bottle. It was pretty expensive and it looks like 25 mils. Like it just looks super tiny for what it is. What I get from this perfume, you guys, is definitely a lot of sweetness. I don't know what gunpowder smells like, to be honest. I cannot tell you. I can't even begin to tell you what gunpowder smells like, but apparently that's what makes this very unique. There's also that osmanthus, there is that fruitiness, there's a lot of vanilla. This to me is just the epitome of a sweet, feminine, flirty fragrance. I actually was, when I was in the mall the other day, this girl walked by me and she smelled so sweet and so good and I just was like, whoa, what is she wearing? And I really should have asked her. I should have asked her, but I didn't. Um, but I can imagine she was wearing something like this. It's just, it's extremely sweet. It projects quite a good distance away. This 
perfume, you guys, is actually a bit of a beast. You have to go very, very light with this. Like if you splurge and buy this, you will not be disappointed with the performance. This is even better performing than the original Flower Bomb. I had one little tiny spray on my wrist in the morning and I was able to smell this on my skin when I went to bed that, light, that night and it was still projecting, it was still coming off of me, I could smell it, I'm sure my boyfriend could smell it. It's quite a strong perfume. You really just need a little bit of this. Even after I washed my wrists, I washed my hands, I washed my wrists, I had a bath, I could still smell this on myself. Um, so it's really, really strong, it's very sexy. I think this would be perfect for going out in the evening, maybe not the best intimate scent unless you go lightly and let it dry down for a long time. And probably a lot of you who are fragrance connoisseurs will comment down below and say that you do find this to be too sweet for you. Um, so this one I would definitely say try before you buy, but this one you guys I think is truly one of the most feminine, sweet, beautiful perfumes that I have in my collection. Easy grab and go for a date night. I'm really excited to try wearing this for a date night. I think you can't go wrong. If you like the original Flower Bomb and you want something a little sweeter and with even better performance, this would be a really good one to check out. So, okay, and the next one, you guys, is from Juliet Has a Gun, and this is Mmm, so it's kind of a bizarre name. <laughs> it's like weird to say on camera, Mmm, you know, but anyway. This is Juliet Has a Gun, Mmm, and this is a powdery vanilla fragrance with a little bit of raspberry the opening. Many of you guys have probably already smelled this. It actually really surprises me that I tried this on, loved it as much as I did, and have it because I actually used to have a travel size and I wasn't really impressed by it. This was well over a year, year and a half ago. I think it reminded me a little too much of Hypnotic Poison, which I already had, and I didn't think I needed both. However, as I've told you guys, I am tired of Hypnotic Poison. That perfume I used to wear a lot when I was in my early 20s. I've gone through at least three bottles of it in my time and I just kind of got over it. And this one is a little different from Hypno Hypnotic Poison. It's not a complete dupe. On camera, this is coming across very like hot orangey pink. I guess it is like an orangey pink. But anyways, it's a pink bottle, it's not an orange bottle. <laughs> um, and the notes that you have in this are raspberry, geranium, and neroli in the opening. In the middle you have tuberose, iris, orange blossom, and jasmine sandback. And in the base you have vanilla, caramel, sandalwood, heliotrope, white musk, and patchouli. And what I get out of those notes most in this perfume is definitely the powdery notes, the vanilla, the caramel, a little bit of sandalwood, but for me it's mostly a powdery vanilla caramel perfume. And I really, really like this one, you guys. This to me, in comparison to the Flower Bomb Nectar, is much more easy to wear. This is also a good intimate scent. This would be a good bedroom scent, a really good Netflix and chill, cuddle on the couch, um, that kind of fragrance. It's sweet, it's feminine, it's sexy, but it's not overly sweet. Really cozy and really delectable, sort of. Very, very feminine. Again, I have had a lot of people ask me if I can do a feminine fragrance video. This one I think I would definitely include. It is one of the most perfect feminine fragrances that I do have in my collection. Um, this is also a large bottle. The only options they had were 100 ml or 7.5. So of course I got the 100, probably would have taken a 50 if they would have had a 50, because I just don't need any more full-size bottles of perfume in my collection. It has this sort of addictive, um, it has like a hypnotic quality. I hate to like make that pun and relate it to the other one, but honestly it has a little bit of a hypnotic feminine, soft, seductive quality to it that I really, really like. It's the type of perfume that makes somebody want to stick their nose a little closer into your skin. And it's just beautiful, it's feminine, it's powdery, it's sweet. You cannot go wrong with this one. I truly think you can't go wrong unless you don't like powdery caramel vanilla scents, which some people don't. If you don't like Hypnotic Poison, you might not like this. Um, what other one? This is also very similar to Kenzo Amore, which I had and kind of grew tired of and let it go. This one for me is just better. This one's a little bit more sexy caramel vibes, and I just really, really like it. Again, it's just such an easy one, such an easy grab and go, sort of like Mon Guerlain. When you don't know what to wear, you could easily just grab for this perfume. So that is Juliet Has a Gun. Mm, really, really like this one. Okay, you guys, so the second last one in today's haul is from Nest, and this is Sunkissed Hibiscus. So if you guys watch my channel, some of you will probably be a little bit surprised because this is a coconutty scent, and as many of you know, I don't particularly love a lot of coconut fragrances. I don't know why, I just, 
I prefer to smell like coconuts if I'm at the beach or wearing a sunscreen or a sun tan lotion. I don't always love the way they smell in perfumes for some reason, but this perfume I absolutely love and I have loved this one since the first time I smelt it. So I had a sample of this um, way back in like spring of 2020. I remember thinking it smelled so beautiful, but at that point in time, I wasn't prepared to buy a bottle. I was just kind of testing out so many perfumes. And again, this was part of my Sephora liberation day <laughs> shopping spree and I sprayed this on my skin you guys and this is such a beautiful addictive feminine kind of sexy beachy scent so in the opening you have coconut and frangipani in the mid you have tuberose gardenia and orange blossom and in the base you have amber and it's that amber in here that gives it that sexiness you guys I honestly thought there was maybe a little bit of vanilla or something but there is a little bit of that sensual kind of sweet woody quality in the base and at the same time it is a coconut fragrance and it is a frange of honey fragrance so it's tropical and it definitely smells like suntan lotion or sunscreen but in the best way possible i think i've told people before and i will say it again i think this is probably the best suntan sunscreen lotion scent I've ever smelt out of all of them. So let me show you the close-up of the bottle. The bottle is absolutely exquisite. I love the florals. It's very pretty. It doesn't look at all like what you would think it smells like. This smells like it should be yellow and white and it smells like a true sunny day at the beach, but it does have that sexy dark amber quality to it. I'm just going to take the lid off here. This is also, I think, quite affordable. These are not crazy expensive fragrances. And this is just really nice. It's really pleasant. I had this on my skin when I was walking around Sephora and I just couldn't stop sniffing my arm. It smells so pretty and I was pretty much sold and I decided to get it. So I think this would be perfect for summer day dates. I think it has a sexiness to it. You could almost get away with it for like an evening in the summer, an evening date. Because of that amber in there, it kind of amps up the sexiness. It's not just a typical like everyday sunscreen you know, suntan lotion, beachy scent. It does have a sexy feminine quality in the base that I really, really like. It's just really beautiful. If you smell this one, let me know what you think of it. This is the only nest fragrance so far that I've kind of fallen in love with. Um, but yeah, it's beautiful. I really like it. Good longevity as well. Like this one was on par with the Juliet has a gun, mm, which also lasted for quite a long time. They're not nearly as crazy as flower bomb nectar, but it does have good lasting power. So this is nest sun kissed hibiscus. Okay. And the last one in today's haul is from Killian and this is love. Don't be shy extreme. You guys, I blind bought this one because I just wanted to treat myself and I've heard so many good things about this one. Actually, I've heard mixed reviews about this one. Some people say that it's better than the original. Some people say they prefer the original and there's a lot of, um, discussion going around about the name extreme because it's not truly an extreme version of the original it's just a different version of the original so you guys this was a really good blind buy such a good blind buy um, i'm really happy that i finally bit the bullet and did it i was thinking about it for a while it's a little bit more expensive than the original love don't be shy and if you guys watch my channel you know that i did used to have the original love don't be shy and that one was a very sweet sugary caramel um, floral fragrance with some marshmallow it was very heavy very sweet and to be honest with that one I just didn't reach for it I think I found it to be a little too heavy and a little too sweet and I just didn't reach for it very often so this one however you guys I have to say I already like this one so much more than the original so the notes that you have in this one are neroli and bergamot in the opening in the middle you have bulgarian ro rose and orange blossom and in the base you have marshmallow vanilla musk and pomegranate and i've heard a lot of reviews i was a little bit nervous to get this one because a lot of people said this was very rose heavy i would disagree this is not a rose heavy scent the rose does come out a little bit more in this one you can definitely smell it in there this one is definitely a little bit more soft it's a little bit more powdery and it's not as cloyingly sweet as the original. So if the original was too sweet for you or you're looking for something maybe a little bit more elegant, maybe a little bit more like elevated, feminine, not so super, super sweet, something a little more toned down, but still that has that original love don't be shy DNA, this is a great one. You guys, this is addictive. This smells so good. Okay, so what I get in this perfume, you know, 
when you get a bag of marshmallows and you know the kind of powdery, that, the powdery bit on the marshmallow, if you like hold the marshmallow up to your nose and actually smell it, that's what this smells like. But then there's also a little bit of sweet neroli in there. And then there's also some beautiful soft florals. And the rose that's in here is a sweet powdery soft rose. It's not a harsh rose or a green rose or, it's not even a particularly fresh rose. It's just like a soft, powdery, lush rose on a bed of powdered marshmallows, basically. There's also a lot of vanilla in here. It's just a beautiful, feminine, sweet, addictive scent. So let me give you a close up of the bottle here. It does have the sort of reflective gold plaque on the front. The juice is yellow in comparison to the original Love Don't Be Shy, which was um, an orangey pinky juice. And the original Love Don't Be Shy way back in the day, I guess was like a really dark juice. I have never seen that one. The back is just completely white. And then what I love about it is the detail that they have on the side here, that white sort of embossed detail. Oh, and it's just, it's so good, you guys. Like, honestly, I like this one so much better than the original. I'm so happy that I bit the bullet and got this one. Um, I just think, again, this is one that you really can't go wrong with for date night, for intimate night, for going out with your loved one, going out for a nice dinner. Um, if you want to smell sexy, you want to smell flirtatious, ultra feminine, like super, super ultra feminine again, which I, which I really like. This is a good one. So there's really not much else I can say about it. I haven't given this one a proper wear you guys. So I cannot speak to how long it really lasts on my skin or how it projects or compliments or anything like that. I will come back and update you on it in the future though. All I can say is that on my first impression and on getting this bottle and smelling it, I'm in love. It's super, super addictive. So this is Love Don't Be Shy Extreme by Killian. I will come back and do a proper review of this one in the future. So that was it for today's video, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these perfumes. Please let me know down below your thoughts on them. And I'm really excited to see you in my next video. Also, make sure to head on over and follow me on Instagram if you're not already. And I'll see you guys all very soon. Bye for now.